for years then we haven't even copyrighted our material we allow people to copy it to give it away that's what we want i don't mean to embarrass anybody here but one of the evolutionist arguments is why do males have nipples everyone knows that god made man nipples to be the non-filthy publicly acceptable kind Hello and welcome to Apologia, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians. What's on your mind today, Eric? What about vestigial structures? Are those evidence of evolution? Wow, that's a good question. This phenomenon of losing things like losing wings in the Galapagos cormorant is called a vestigial organ. And Darwin himself made great use of vestigial organs as evidence for evolution, because it would be very hard for a creationist to explain why the Galapagos cormorant has these little tiny wings that are no use for flying. But of course, on Darwin's evolution theory, it's very easy to explain. The ancestors had wings, and they gradually lost them. Vestigial organs, one of Darwin's key arguments. Well, it seems Dawkins and Darwin seem to think so, but those guys seem to take everything as evidence for evolution. I suppose we should start by finding out what you mean by vestigial structures. You address the topic in no less than three of your Creation Today videos, so I'm sure you've defined it somewhere. Uh, what, 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 does, what does it actually mean to say that it's vestigial? The word no. vestigial implies that they used to have a function previously and the creature has now evolved and no longer needs that function. Three episodes and that's the best you've got? Vestigial implies something? I'm not interested in what it implies. What does it actually mean? Vestige is a noun that means a trace, mark, or visible sign left by something, such as an ancient city or a condition or practice, vanished or lost. It can also mean the smallest quantity or trace. Vestige also means a bodily part or organ that is small and degenerate or imperfectly developed in comparison to one more fully developed in an earlier stage of the individual, in a past generation, or in closely related forms. Thank you, Webster's Dictionary. Can you use that in a sentence? What's encouraging is, is that the overwhelming majority of Cubans are interested in ending the Cold War, the last vestige of the Cold War, and moving forward. Okay, so a vestige is a visible remainder of something left behind. The biological definition defines something that is smaller or diminished from an earlier stage or generation. That doesn't say anything about this no longer needed to function that creation today implies. To be sure, some vestigial structures indeed have no remaining function, but that's not a prerequisite or a requirement. But I've heard people using vestigial that way before. Eric must be getting it from somewhere. This textbook tells the kids, boys and girls, the humans have an appendix that is no longer necessary. It's vestigial, and that's evidence of evolution. First, can I go on a bit of a side rant and ask what the Hovind family obsession is with grade school textbooks from the 80s and 90s? If you're making or challenging a scientific claim, why aren't they pointing to a peer-reviewed journal? Or maybe an article describing a peer-reviewed paper? Or at least a textbook at the college level? Or maybe a high school textbook from this century? I'd even take Wikipedia at this point. Can you imagine if I produced a video claiming that Noah's Ark wasn't big enough to fit all the animals, and as my primary source I point to this illustration from a Sunday school curriculum? Do you suppose Eric would insist that I should go directly to the Bible's claims rather than a grade school simplification? He would be right to do so. You're the man of the house now, Eric. It's time to address the grown-ups. But I digress. Let's hear that again, paying attention to the words on screen and the words Eric is saying. The humans have an appendix that is no longer necessary. It's vestigial. And that's evidence of evolution. Keep in mind that Eric put this graphic up, not me. First of all, it says the appendix has been thought to be vestigial. It's not even claiming that it is. Second, the text makes no mention of any kind that the appendix is no longer necessary. All it does is point out that the human version of the cecum and appendix are sure diminished compared to those in a horse. Wait, isn't that the definition of vestigial? Something that is diminished? So, Eric mentioned the appendix. Which is a kind of a stupid thing to have in your body. It doesn't do much. It holds on to some gut bacteria, which is nice. But it pretty much does nothing for your entire life until the day when suddenly it has an uprising and decides to kill you. But there are a number of other human traits we call vestigial because they played a prominent role in our ancestors, but a diminished or different role for modern humans. These include the goosebump reflex used for warmth or defense in other mammals, wisdom teeth, which no longer fit into the shrinking jaw of creatures that cook their food, the muscles attach to our ear, but provide relatively little movement. The inside corner of our eye has a remnant of a nictating membrane or extra eyelids. The tailbone. 
It now serves as an anchor for some pelvic muscles, but it's also what's left of our ancestors' tails. Every one of us actually had a tail at one point when the basic body plan is being laid out at around four weeks of gestation. But in humans and other apes, the cells in the tail are programmed to die a few weeks after they appear. Very rarely though, a mutation allows the ancestral blueprint to prevail and a human baby will be born with a true vestigial tail. So now all I have is this tiny itty bitty stuff of a tail, but it is not totally useless. That little bone is now the anchor to which all of the muscles that help us uh, control our continents if you know what I mean, are stuck to. So thanks, Tailbone. That is an important job, and I appreciate it. And, most adorably, the palmar grasp reflex in babies' hands and feet that let them grip and support their entire body weight. Because our ancestors and cousins do this. But it's not just humans. We see vestiges all over nature. Like the wings of ostriches, emu, and other flightless birds. The dew claw on dogs that indicate a fifth finger that once touched the ground fingers and even fingernails on manatees, the lizard species Nemodophorus reproduces without involvement of sperm, yet still has all the female parts and lesbian drive for sexual activity, or Eric's favorite, the legs and pelvis bones in whales. Check this out, they say the whale has a vestigial pelvis and femur from when it used to walk around on land. What? Yeah, the whale has a vestigial pelvis and femur. Check this textbook out. Just imagine whales walking around. It's true. <laughs> imagine the whale walking around on land. Okay. I think you understand fully, Eric, that it is an ancestor of the whale that was on land. The transition from Pachycetus to the whales is among the best documented evolutionary transitions in terms of fossil record and genetics. But I'll let you finish your argument from incredulous voice inflection. Here's what they're talking about, the vestigial pelvis and femur on a whale. Now we happen to have in our museum a whale vertebrae. I brought it here with me. A whale vertebrae. This is one of the vertebrae out of the back of a whale. He didn't need it anymore, so uh, we took it from him. This is one of those bones that they're referring to. Ah, there's the bone. Yes, boys and girls, just imagine whales walking around. <laughs> I'm having a hard time imagining that, okay? Whales walking around, yeah. I don't think that represents reality. Once again, let's turn to the proper definition of a vestigial structure, one that is diminished in importance and fitness for a prior function. And Eric just demonstrated it proudly. He held up a whale femur that is in no way going to work for its original function, walking around. Of course, now we know that those particular bones in the whale do have a function because they keep the pelvis of the whale in shape and its, right. uh, and its reproductive organs. And That's so right. On. It has to do with making more baby whales. They need those bones. And again, vestigial is not necessarily synonymous with useless or without function, even though you're attempting to reinforce that misconception. Vestigial is merely a remnant. A diminished function or a changed function is still vestigial. The whale pelvis continues to anchor reproductive organs. Great. It's no longer used for walking. Great. Vestigial. And speaking of reinforcing misconceptions... Supposing it was true, supposing that, uh, uh, the, the, that uh, the appendix was something that used to work and had been switched off, how does that help evolution anyway? That's, that's the opposite of evolution. It's things degrading. Yes, you're not gaining anything yes. new. You're losing stuff. Exactly. Unfortunately, that silly monkey-to-man image gives some people the wrong idea that evolution is somehow directional that it somehow has a goal in mind. If only someone, maybe even someone from that very same Creation Today episode, could explain it. Yes. Because the whole idea about evolution is that it does not have an end in sight. Right. It doesn't have an it's end in sight. It's mindless. Natural selection is concerned only with fitness to reproduce. Every structure in a body costs energy to produce and maintain, so cutting loose of structures that are less important can be equally beneficial as any new structure. Evolution is change, not necessarily new things. If you tossed out an old sofa you weren't using and your roommate said, hey, something's changed in the living room, would you deny it, claiming the only way a room can change is by adding new furniture? Getting rid of the old thing might be the best change of all. What about vestigial structures? Are those evidence of evolution? I don't care what you believe. Vestigial structures are at least evidence for evolution. The fact that bodies across the plant and animal kingdom contain structures with limited, changed, or even negative usage that happen to be consistent with structures that would have been very useful to its ancestors is at least highly consistent with evolution, whether you accept it as proof or not. While I understand the counter that common parts can indicate a common designer, 
Why would the creator so rigidly insist on using all the parts in every creature? When assembling IKEA furniture, we just ignore the leftover pieces at the end. We don't just jam them in. And even Lego sets feel free to create a custom piece every once in a while when repurposing the existing ones don't optimize the model. But most of all, vestigial doesn't mean useless. It means a remnant of something else. If you pretend that it has to mean useless, then you are doing nothing but setting up a straw man. Again, not addressing the science. Discovering some situation where a body makes use of some structure called vestigial doesn't help or hurt either case. If we are evolved from a common ancestor, vestigial structures make perfect sense. But if kinds are specially created, then the designer sure went out of his way to make it look more like a recycling project. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to be notified of new videos on the Apologia channel, why not take a second to click subscribe? And before you go, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and let me know in the comment section what your favorite vestigial structure is. Mine's the coccyx. It's fun to say. Later.